2016 is half over, and NASA scientists say it was the hottest half year on record. Now to the historic flash flooding being called a one in a thousand year event. This view from inside a restaurant, cars spinning downstream. Scenes like this played throughout the small town 16 miles west of Baltimore. Water rushed through the streets turning roads into rivers and sweeping away anything in its path. There's people in the water! Scientists tell us there is a 0.1% chance of a, this kind of rain event ever happening, and clearly here in Maryland, it did, George. Wow. A disaster movie. It was like if you've seen the Avengers come and just go through a town. And it's so rippled, it looks like an earthquake hit. The storm was so powerful, it created new paths. Figured it's gonna happen living down in Ellicott City, I guess, but not like this. This is unbelievable. Wow, unreal. NASA researchers found the first six months of this year weren't just warmer than usual, they were the warmest since record keeping began in 1880. This is really important because if it's hot and if it's dry, then we have problems like forest fires, like droughts. This is what really concerns us. As the fire seen in this time-lapse video grows closer to the historic Pacific Coast Highway along one of the most scenic drives in the country. It is a popular vacation destination for many in the mid-state, but tonight the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is issuing an unprecedented travel warning. Pregnant women and their partners should stay away from the Miami area. It is the first time the CDC has warned people not to travel to an American city. Now, Lee County Mosquito Control says the 80s Egypti mosquito, which can carry the Zika virus, is showing increased resistance to pyrethrum, common pesticide used to control mosquito populations. Yeah, I wasn't even aware of that. Is this after more than a dozen cases of Zika virus were contracted in Miami. This is the first occasion where a mosquito has gotten infected and transmitted others. And of course, once they begin, they become infected, they can infect mosquitoes in turn. In Siberia, this is a an uncommon event. Experts say unusually warm weather is responsible for the outbreak, defrosting cells which have been laying dormant for decades. Deer that graze in the area were the first to be infected. More than 2,000 of them have already died. You know, on your next trip to Disney World, if you have one planned, you may notice something a little different on your feet. The next time you go to a Disney theme park, you may want to pay a little closer attention to your shoes. Disney has just obtained a patent for a new type of technology that can track theme park guests with their feet. According to the Sentinel, information given to the patent agency says Disney would use sensors and cameras to help identify guests and provide a customized park experience. Well, Disney says, uh, well, they already do track guests. Currently, Disney World can track guests through magic bands, hotel keys, RFID bracelets, fast passes, and credit cards. Have you ever told your doctor a little white lie? Well, some researchers at ASU are using facial recognition technology so they can detect when you are. They say the goal isn't to confront patients, but rather to help them. He wants to tap into those emotions using facial recognition and voice tracking technology so patients get more out of the appointment. Your facial expression, the way your head is moving, your body movements, all of that is 70% of listening. Dr. Chisholm says he hopes this technology one day becomes very common in doctor's offices. Entering multiple passwords and security questions will soon be a thing of the past. Australian banks and the tax office are pioneering new technology, which means all you'll need 
is your voice. Well, you just heard it, and it's true, a Georgia court... Well, it's lewd, it's crude, it's awful, but it is legal in Georgia. And we're talking about something that has been called upskirting. It's the practice of somebody taking a cell phone photo of a person's private parts. Most oftentimes, uh, it has been men sneaking up on women's skirts. It's disturbing. A warning for women in Georgia, if someone secretly takes pictures under your skirt, it is perfectly legal. The state does not have an upskirting law, and due to a technicality, Georgia's Court of Appeals says upskirting doesn't count as invasion of privacy. Well, I was shocked, like most people, that it sounds absurd that you could not be found guilty of doing something that's so offensive. Well, I think that's kind of crazy. I, if somebody came up my skirt and tried to take a picture, I would assume they would want to arrest that person. A family outraged after a former Hamilton County bus driver rapes their daughter and avoids jail time. It's sickening. Those are the only two words Chandra Whitlock can use to describe the rape case involving Alexander Rodriguez. The system is messed up these days. And Rodriguez is being treated like a DUI offender. Whitlock agrees. Just to know that there's someone out there that does that to a little kid and he's allowed to roam free, but they'll put someone for a DUI in jail. It's not right. When it comes to choosing clothes for our kids, the decisions are usually fairly routine, but should they be? As Katherine Hauser shows us, more and more parents are seeing clothing as an opportunity to help shape their children. Haley Woods tries to buy gender neutral clothes, and the term is gaining popularity. We really need gender neutral clothing to start at this age because we're building up on how to start dismantling, you know, sexism and misogyny and all that stuff. And it really does start from this tiny building block. But creating a unisex wardrobe is challenging. While some big retailers are gradually including a more gender neutral look, offering clothes that defy gender norms. The newer generation of parents thinks that children shouldn't be limited by their gender. Uh, does this look wholesome to you? This video alone could freak out parents, but the Satanic Temple is trying to reach students by getting into elementary schools nationwide. That is scary that anybody would even consider letting Satan into anywhere. New at 6, Satan in our schools. It's a topic going wild on social media nationwide this week. It could turn into one hellish extracurricular activity. That is, if the Satanic Temple has its way. It's after school Satan, so I picture it sort of more like... Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. Yep, you heard that right. It's called After School Satan. Amy Jensen, who graduated from DU and used to teach in Denver, has offered to sponsor the club at this Tucson school. Jensen says it's more about opening minds and less about worshiping Satan. I want to say that everybody's entitled to their beliefs. However, I feel like that's just a little odd. Overseas in Poland, what's known as the Catholic Woodstock ended with a tremendous Sunday Mass and parting words of wisdom from Pope Francis. At one point during the celebrations, the Pope asked the Masses gathered from so many different countries to hold hands and to find common humanity. It underlined a message he's had all week, find that which unites, not divides. Pope Francis took a tumble at a mass in Poland today. It was captured on video. The 79-year-old was blessing the altar with incense at one of the country's holiest shrines when he lost his balance. His holiness was helped up. It underlined a message he's had all week. Find that which unites. It's also worthy for us to recognize that our nations have worked together for security and peace and human dignity around the world. In Paris, the most ambitious agreement in history to fight climate change, a new sustainable development set of goals to end extreme poverty and promote health and education and equality for all people. Now, from a local government perspective, I think the SDGs are specifically significant for two key reasons. First, we now have 
the first ever comprehensive and practical definition of sustainable development, which acknowledges the interconnectivity between economic, social, and environmental dimensions of development. And this is hugely significant and a welcome step forward. It enables all sectors of society to come together behind a shared vision of a more peaceful, sustainable, and prosperous world where everyone has a role to play in making this a reality. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to inform you that uh, the world now is a global village. I think that it is very clear that the time is now for us to all get involved. It is not everybody that is aware and continuous engagement, conversation, publicizing this and conscientizing everybody to realize that the SDGs are real and this is what is going to change our world, this is what is going to change our localities, is more apparent today than ever before. So we're going to keep on pushing hard to shape a, uh, an international order that works for our people.